Y así como lo acaban de ver, a los culos se hace mejor. I am Jorge Ruiz, mejor conocido como Negros Party para aquellos que son nuevos aquí en la plataforma. Y los que están aquí ya me están llamando negros porque somos casi familia. Ahora viene los trendings. Here we go. Trending topic of the day. Hoy le traemos la situación de George Ford. George Ford, who was killed by a Minneapolis police officer. Um, and, you know, it, it brings it brings the question of racism again. You know, and at, at this point, you know, it's a bit tiring. Um, to have to have these conversations, you know, over and over and over again, you know, you know, for those who don't, I guess, understand what racism is, you know, racism is that belief that one race is superior or inferior than another. That's what racism is, you know, and, um, you know, many could say about slavery and whatnot, but listen, yo, slavery was for 246 years. And on top of that, there was segregation for 89 years. And, you know, people sometimes make it seem like it was so so long ago. And, and reality is, is, it wasn't. This was something in the 54s. So there's people who are alive today that went through this. So, it you know, it bothers me that that we have to sometimes see these situations to kind of come and speak about the subject. You know, and, you know, I just, I just think that it's real easy to just say, you know, um, let's all be human beings, you know, coming from the white man. Um, but, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm not having it. I'm not, I'm not doing it. You know, you know, I, I just feel like it's just another way for the white man to say, um, be like me, act like me, eat like me and conduct yourself like me. And we're going to be okay. You know, and the reality is, is that, you know, it's almost as to making the synonym between, you know, being a human, being white and being American. Like it's, you know, it's, there's, there's no other, there's no other route to be a human but to be white and to work and to be american you have to be white you know um but reality is you know i think as long as as we keep them comfortable um we're we're safe you know but yet but nobody wants to do that you know what i mean like i don't want to pretend to be white i don't want to i don't want to be somebody who i'm not you know um and you you can't accept my culture you can't accept my hair Um, and you definitely cannot accept my skin color, you know, and I think that's what hurts. Like the, the fact that, you know, they can't accept who we are and accept us for the things that we stand for and how we look, um, and say like, you are also an American. So, you know, I think it's, it's sad to, to have the, you know, have to lose somebody, um, to kind of also bring light upon this, light upon this, um, you know, and, you know, I want you to see my skin color. I don't want you to pretend like I don't have a different skin color. Yeah, I want you to see it because I'm black and I'm proud. I'm black and I am proud. The skin color you see, yes, yes, I am black and I'm proud. I don't want to be no other color. This is the color that I want to be in, you know, and and I think, you know, there's this white privilege that, um sometimes goes overseen and you know and and i'm gonna and i'm read i'm read off a few things um so that people could see you know why i'm why i'm bringing this up because the reality is is that you know there's been so many other situations where a lot of people have gotten hurt yet um you know the white person who was in who was in charge of doing this you know was uh calmly arrested or was calmly dealt with Right. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember of D um, Dylan Roof, Dylan Roof, who murdered nine people, murdered nine people and was arrested peacefully. Nine people and was arrested peacefully. So when, you know, and I, and I, you know, I think, you know, a police officer, you know, it's, you know, when the endangerment of others, right, um, de-escalation. Um, these are things that are very important before you make a decision. But I also want to bring up the point, the fact that eight out of the 10 largest massive shootings in the United States were conducted by white men. And no one speaks about this. No one talks about this. Eight out of 10. Eight out of 10. And to be exact, Route 91 Harvest Music Festival in Las Vegas, October 2nd, 2017, 59 killed. 526 people injured, and it was a white man who did it. Sandy Hook Elementary School, 26 killed, 
white man. First Baptist Church, 26 killed, white man did it. Luby Cafeteria, 23 killed, a white man did it. Walmart, Apostle, Texas, 23 killed, 26 injured, a white man did it. McDonald's, San Isidro, California, 21 killed, a white man did it. Douglas High School, Florida, 17 killed, a white man did it. University of Texas, 16 killed, white man did it. Yet, yeah, the black man is the one that is oppressed. The black man is that when you see him walking by your car, you're trying to lock your doors. The black man is looked as a threat. He still is looked at the threat, but the white man has caused more damage to this country. And I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. How? For the white people, I, I... How much racism do you face every day? Why is your history um, part of our curriculum? Yeah, everybody else is, is either an elective or you get a month. Have you ever felt depressed? Are you starting to understand why Colin Kaepernick is taking that knee? Your American dream is our nightmare. Vamos a entrar ahora en un tema totalmente diferente, con un diferente ambiente. Les traemos cosas que las mujeres no deberían de decir en la cama. Te lo voy a pronunciar de nuevo. Cosas que las mujeres no deberían de hacer. Digo, decir, en la cama. Cosas que las mujeres no deberían decir en la cama. La número uno. Puedes apagar la luz. Miren, ¿qué, qué yo explico con esta palabra? Y, no, y sé que a veces ustedes las mujeres diciendo, pero ¿qué problema hay con apagar la luz? Lo que sucede con esto es que interrumpe el fluyo. El, 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 el flow y el flow no se puede dañar cuando tú tienes un flow en la cama no lo puedes dañar el flow con apágame la luz no, deja esa luz prendida el flow se dio así si, tú, si, 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 si a ti te molesta tanto la luz asegúrate de que antes de que comience el flow apagar la luz no me diga a media vuelta de yo ya estar con los pantalones abajo listo y ready para encañonar me, apágame la luz no no, no lo digas. Please. La número dos. Number two. Se me olvidó tomar la pastilla. Um, ok. So how do I put this? Ok. So una de las dificultades más grandes que va a tener un caballero en su vida es el tener eh, relaciones sexuales con una dama sin usar eh, un condón. Y de repente eh, la señorita se le ha olvidado tomar la pastilla. Y ahora te encuentras tú en una posición en que le decir, bueno, sin gorrito puede ser que haya cumpleaños hoy. Sin goma puede ser que corra el carro hoy. Y es una situación muy incómoda, un pensamiento que a veces no queremos tener. So, damas, si ustedes están en sus patillas, asegúrense de tomar sus patillitas para nosotros estar, eh, para que el flow de nosotros no se dañe. El flow, mucha atención, Aral. Flow, así me mito, como tú lo acabas de decir. Número 3, ok, la número 3 <risa> La número 3 Ya entró Ok, mi amor eh, Si por casualidades del mundo y casualidades de tu vida Tú te das una situación en la cual te encuentras con un caballero El cual no tiene su miembro eh, de gran altitud O no es eh, tan largo como pensabas Creo que tú, antes que suceda o después que sucedas, puedes hablar de, del tamaño, ¿right? Pero no, 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 no le haga eso a él, por favor. No, no se lo haga. Tú sabes cómo tú le estás desbaratando el hijo al pobrecito. Lo estás dejando sin nada. Lo estás dejando sin el poco de masculinidad que tiene el pobrecito. Lo has matado. Número cuatro. Tú, number four. ¿Con cuántas mujeres tú has estado? Ok. Si tú y yo ya estamos eh, a centímetros de tener relaciones sexuales, a segundos de tener relaciones sexuales, 
¿Por qué traer esta pregunta ahora? ¿Con cuántas mujeres yo he estado? Y si te interesa, podemos tener la conversación antes, podemos tener la conversación después. Pero minutos antes, segundos antes, centímetros antes, no vamos a tener esta conversación de cuántas mujeres con las que yo he estado. No podemos tener esta conversación. Esto daña el flow. Y no podemos dañar el... Exacto, el flow. No lo podemos dañar. No lo podemos dañar. No puedes dañar el flow. Pero que si dañas el flow, suceden cosas. No estamos ya en el, en el mood. No podemos hacer lo que queremos. No tenemos tanta eh, adrenalina, tanta salvajeridad para poder atacar. Porque, para serte sincera, es, estás conmigo. Tú eres la que está aquí conmigo. Tú eres la que importa. La del pasado ya son pasado. Como dijo José José, ya lo pasado es pasado. Ok, número 5. Y la número 5, eh, yo, soy, yo soy un hombre sincero y me he encontrado en la posición del número 5. Eh, eh, de alguna manera u otra me disfracé, fru, 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 di cotorri, me salí de esa, ¿veis? Pero, eh, damas, nunca en su vida, por favor, nunca digan esto. Tan rápido acabate. Mi amor, cosita linda, preciosa. Yo estoy más que seguro que él entiende que lo acabó rápido. Yo estoy más que seguro y sí, 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 que tú entiendes que él se acabó rápido. Pero no lo digas. Podemos tener la conversación después de otra manera, pero nunca le digas. Tan rápido acabaste. Tú sabes lo que tú agarrar un cuchillo y trapasarle el corazón y jalárselo y entrárselo de nuevo en otro hoyo y sacárselo de nuevo y entrarlo y sacarlo y entrarlo y sacarlo y entrarlo y sacarlo y entrarlo y sacarlo, y entrarlo, y sacarlo, y entrarlo, y sacarlo. Eso es lo que tú le estás haciendo al pobrecito cuando tú le dices algo así. So, es algo ofensivo para el hombre. O sea que después de tú tener sexo con una mujer y ella te diga, tan rápido acabaste. Es difícil. No es tan fácil vivir la vida de un hombre. Mucha presión. Si no eres lo suficientemente grande en una, en una no duras demasiado, como quieres malo. Mucha, pero mucha presión. Número 6, número 6. Ok, la, y la número 6 también me quilla porque la número 6 va con la número 5, ¿vale? La número 6. Te falta mucho. Mi hija de la grandísima madre que te parió. So, entonces, si te lo doy rápido, no es suficiente. Si duro mucho, también es un problema. Ustedes tienen que decidir si ustedes quieren que dure el poco o que dure mucho. Una de las dos. No hay que nada en between. Es una de las dos. Tienen que coger. Dios mío. Porque qué te creen que cuando uno, que tú crees que uno no está enfocado para durar tanto. Tú sabes cuántos estos tigres están pensando en la abuela para no poder eh, llegar al clímax. Tú sabes cuántos tigres están pensando en otra cosa que le va a bajar el fluyo de sangre a su pene para que no lleguen al clímax. Eso es un enfoque. Eso es precisión. Eso es tiempo. Eso es talento. Y vas a venir a decirme. Oh, ¿Cuándo va a terminar? Eh, eh, te falta mucho. ¿Qué ustedes creen? Que esto es, esto es fácil. No es fácil ser un hombre. No es fácil. Dios. Y por último. La número 7. Gracias a Dios. Déjame tocar, déjame tocar una tablita aquí. Gracias a Dios que la número 7 no me ha pasado a mí. Porque el día que me pase, pueden ser que este podcast ya no exista. Si la número 7 me pasa, puede ser que el negro esté eh, de, eh, detrás de las rejas. Si la número 7 me pasa a mí, ustedes lo van a ver porque lo van a ver por toda la noticia. Si la número 7 me pasa a mí, va, yo hago un show completo. Déjame contestar el teléfono. Mire, dije tú. Ok. Eh, no te atrevas a contestar el teléfono mientras estás en el medio del acto sexual con una persona. Y esto va para los dos. Yo no va más para las mujeres. Esto va para los dos. Right? Um, es, no es tan solo que es una falta de respeto, es... Me está diciendo que lo que está sucediendo no te gusta, primeramente. Si no te gusta, te puedes ir. Te lo dije yo. Número dos, ¿qué tan importante puede ser esta llamada? Déjame acabar. 
let me finish. You you know what that is? Pick up the phone while we're having sex. That's that's crazy. To tell me, yo, how much how much longer before you come? That's wild. Oh, you came too quick. That's disrespectful. How many ladies have you been with? None of your business. Is it inside yet? You destroyed my ego. I forgot to take the pill. I'm still raw dogging. Can you turn off the lights? No, I don't want to turn off the lights. Listen, it's not easy being a man. It's tough out here. And y'all need to help us. Jesus. That was a sucedias with Negro. Let's go now to rant of the day. And today's rant of the day, today's rant of the day is going to be focused on men. Why men? Um, just because, you know, Twitter currently has this trending topic of um, dear men, right? And um, I feel like there's a lot of topics here that, um, that men need to hear about and um, men um, uh, should understand. Um, and I think this was a perfect opportunity for me to do it. Um, and I'm going to start with um, dear men, um, asking for help does not make you less of a man. Um, and I understand, um, I've been in the position where I thought asking for help, uh, made me feel less of a man. Um, to be honest, I think I sometimes struggle with it today. You know, um, sometimes you feel like, you know, you should be complete, but I think the difference between, um, you know, a boy, um, and a man is that, you know, we acknowledge that we're not perfect. We acknowledge that we have room for improvement. Um, we acknowledge that, um, there's going to be others who have, uh, um, the experience, the knowledge. Um, to help us get past whatever it is that we need help with. And I think the most important part is being able to actually ask for that help um, and uh, and be willing to uh, understand that it doesn't make us less of a man for asking for it. So, dear man, um, you know, admitting you have mental health problems does not make you less of a man either. All right. Um, and, you know, I think mental health, uh, especially in men, you know, it's uh, highly... Uh, I don't want to say I don't want to I don't think I don't think criticize is the word that I'm looking for. Um, I think that it's something that um, many men look down upon because it's kind of like oh you're not strong enough, right? And um, the reality is, you know, um, I think mental disorder is just like the same thing when you go to counseling for marriage, um, when you go to the doctor to go check uh, your physical. Um, when you go to a dentist, go check your teeth. It's the same thing. You take you're taking care of your body, right? Um, and um, when you have a mental, uh, yeah, to maintain your mental health, I think we should also make sure that we attend these doctors to make sure that our mental health is important. You know, we there's so many other disorders um, that affect um, you know the mood, um, thinking, uh, behavior. You know, you know, ranging from depression, anxiety, um, schizophrenia. Uh, eating disorders, uh, ad addictive behaviors, um, you know, and these are things that as men, um, I think we should, you know, maintaining, um, keep maintenance um, on them, you know, because, you know, you, we could be good today and we could think that we're good today, but we should always uh, take the time to, to check um, on ourselves and especially on our mental health because um, I feel like we uh, have a lot of pressure on things. Um, so moving on to the next one, uh, dear men, uh, showing emotion does not make you less of a man. Um, this is this one. This, this one does really resonates with me because um, you know lately um, I've been uh, you know I've been I've been emotional. Um, you know I I can't watch a movie and have a sad scene without like busting out in tears. You know, um, and I have like this uh, you know this little George inside that is telling me. Um, hey, you're you're not supposed to cry about this. You know, you know, you're supposed to suck it up. Don't don't let those tears come out. Um, you know, but um, I wonder, you know, is it, you know, is that is that good for me? You know, what I mean, is you know, what's you know, I think this this should be a point where we kind of accept that we have feelings, um, that we could uh, connect with others, and that and that we connect with others, and that um, it's important to have emotions. It's important to feel. It's important um, to allow ourselves to be emotional with others because you know a one I think is you know I think it uh it strengthens um our connection with people and um you know it's uh it, I think it's one of the, by far one of the most important things that uh, a man um should have is being able to be emotional and being able to share it you know especially when 
you you move in your manhood um, and you become a father and you have you know you have little ones you know I think you know that that should allow you to be emotional with those kids and you know with your um, with your wife because you know those are people who share very important like moments in your life so you should keep them and um, dear man uh, don't look for validation in your masculinity by involving yourself with a bunch of women um, I chose this one um, because I feel like this is one that um, that is currently by far one of the biggest struggles that men have. Um, your masculinity is only confirmed um, by the amount of women that you're with and how, you know, how we conduct ourselves in certain manners uh, to verify that masculinity, right? Um, and I don't think it should be like that. I think, you know, our masculinity should be defined by our values and our character. It should be valued by the way that we carry ourselves, how we treat others, um, and the impact that we have on the lives of others. I think that is the way that your masculinity should be confirmed. Um, and last but not least, the last one. Dear men, um, don't let anyone make you feel less of a man because you can't afford the lifestyle that they can't maintain themselves. Um, you know, I know financial is definitely one of the struggles that a lot of men have, right? Um, and I don't mean like everyone's broke. But I mean is uh, when we have financial hardships, it's very hard for us to deal with them. Personally, I'm one of those. Um, I don't. I still haven't learned how to deal with financial hardships, and um, and I sometimes believe that, you know, it's it's a pressure that I put on myself because I feel like I'm at a point where I'm supposed to be um, financially stable. I'm supposed to maintain myself um, and not be able to, and, not, and I shouldn't be struggling, um, but. You know, I feel like sometimes, you know, we receive this pressure from other people that I can't maintain the the lifestyle that they speak of, um, yet they, you know, they expect us to maintain it to verify whether we're a man or not, and it shouldn't be like that. And uh, today we're going to bring in a new segment, a new segment llamado Yo Tengo Un Amigo. You Tengo Un Amigo is that friend. We all have that friend. We all have that friend that does that one thing that you're kind of like, oh my God, this guy. Or like, come on, bro, we can't, you can't be doing that. Come on, you can't be doing that. Or that one friend's like, yeah, you know, this guy's wife's up. He's not coming back around. So I had a few of my friends send me a few voice notes. So I'm going to play the voice notes and look, <laughs> this is what happened. Es eh, más, me, me quillé. Yo tengo un amigo por ahí, mira, que cuando yo le mando un mensaje, yo lo saludo a ella y a la mujer. Yo le digo, buenos días, fulano, buenos días, fulano. Porque yo no sé cuál de los dos que lo está leyendo ya. Listen to me, oye, yo creo que a veces tenemos ese amigo y todo, y tú, mira, to, y, <risa> mira, yo sé que tú tienes ese amigo, el que cuando tú mandas un voice no o tú tienes un chat, tú tienes que manejar de qué manera tú estás hablando porque tú no sabes si él o la mujer que está leyendo los mensajes, o él o ella, el que lo está cogiendo. So uno tiene que andar tranquilito antes de que te den un fuetazo. Mira, bro, yo tengo un amigo que ese bárbaro le tira y se lo mete a todas las exes de sus amigos, bro. Tú puedes creer, pero tú sabes que no vamos a entrar en tema porque ese tema es bien delicado. Bro. <laughs> All right, listen to me. Um, I think that's part of bro code. Um, can I... <sighs> Okay, I've done it. I did it once. I did it once. I did it once. I did it once. But I kind of sort of asked permission before I did it. So I kind of think I kind of cleared myself out on that one. But, you know, Baren de ta dándose la ex de su amigo. Porque si, lo que yo... Yo no voy a decir nada. Vamos a movernos para la próxima. Antes de que yo me meta aquí en un lío. Parcero, yo tengo un amigo que me le cingue la mujer. Y ahora creo que se agregó otro. Yo, who are these? Ah, listen, up, listen, 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 listen. Primeramente, primeramente, si usted tiene un amigo en el cual coro entero le dando a la mujer, usted tiene que ser buenos amigos o no son amigos. Si son buenos amigos, le dicen, oye, la mujer tuya está corriendo por el coro entero y nos está tirando los perros. Si no son buenos amigos, se le van a dar a la mujer y no le van a decir nada. Eso es lo que dice el negro, pero eso soy yo. Y aquí, <laughs> y aquí viene otro más, aquí viene otro más. Here we go. Oye. Aquí en, entre tú y yo, yo tengo un amigo, pero no le diga nada, Dios. Yo tengo un amigo que está enamorado, pero no de la novia. La novia no lo sabe. Y la amiga que es que se lo mama, lo sabe. Pero no diga nada, oíste. Oye. That's wild. That's wild. <laughs> Ahora, yo tengo una cosa. Mira, yo tengo un amigo que después que se casó con la mujer, Man, nunca ha vuelto a luchar, eh, ya no responde, eh, ya no llama a uno, pero está todo, 
Manito, yo te quiero como quieras y te queremos de gratis. Esto fue, eh, yo tengo un amigo, porque todos tenemos ese amigo. La pregunta es, ¿ese amigo eres tú?